You are now tuned into the Leader's Lens Podcast. Welcome back to the Leader's Lens Podcast. My name is Jacob Espinoza. This quarter, we're diving into conflict resolution. On the newsletter, on the podcast, this is what we're talking about. Because conflict resolution, it's a big deal. If you are a leader and you do not know how to effectively resolve conflict or help your team understand how to effectively resolve conflict, you're going to run into a lot of problems, right? Things are not going to get easier when you avoid conflict. It's not going to happen. When there's conflict in the office, productivity goes down, employee morale goes down, people end up wanting to quit, more likely. And here's a, a data point that I found. Companies with a healthy cultures have a 13.9% turnover rate versus 48.4% in those with a poor culture. That's a big deal. Replacing half of your staff, like that's a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of resources that go into that. Here's another data point. U.S. employees spend about 2.8 hours weekly on conflict. That's costing $3.59 billion annually. That's a big number right there. And if your team does not have a healthy relationship with conflict, they don't understand how to effectively resolve it, you are contributing to that number. And that sucks. Nobody wants that. I don't want that for you. So I'm here this quarter discussing conflict resolution frameworks and tactics you can use and apply in your business. So let's, let's dive in. To the leader's lens, I appreciate you being here. Here is something you need to know about conflict. It is contagious. When two people have conflict, they don't let it just be between them, right? Each person goes out and starts recruiting tribes. They start recruiting allies, people that have their back in this conflict because they don't want to feel like they're in it alone. They want people confirming that they are right and the other person is wrong. They will invest energy, time, and resources in this instead of doing the things that they should be doing to help your team move forward and get closer to their goals. So it starts as a one-on-one -on -one clash of the Titans, two people just fighting it out over something that's probably not a big deal. It's probably a miscommunication. There's probably is a route that can be solved if they took the time to focus there as opposed to spending their energy focusing on why the other person is wrong. But instead of leaving it there, they go out and recruit people. So it starts as one-on-one -on -one eventually becomes clicks. People, multiple people on your team who are having this person's back or having this person's back, and you got this rivalry happening in your office that's eating up time, it's eating up resources, it's preventing people from having a good experience while they're at work, it's creating a toxic place where people do not want to be, but it all starts with these two people who refuse to understand the other person's perspective and try to find a way to make, make things work. So here's what you need to try to teach people. It's hard. And as a leader, you have to start and do it. You have to do this first. But you really have to help people understand the value of understanding why people do the things that they do. People generally do things with good intentions. There are very few people out there that are actively trying to hurt other people. These people exist. I'm not discrediting that. But for the majority of us, the majority of people on your team, they have great intentions. They want to come to work. They want to do a good job. And they want to go home and be with their families, their loved ones, or do the things that they're enjoying, right? That's what they want. And so what happens, though, is that something happens that is misperceived by somebody else who feels like this thing was done as an attack against me or this thing was done is preventing me from being at my best. And in those moments, we have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. And instead of joining the fight or starting a fight with somebody else, actually taking the time to listen and understand where this other person is coming from. So imagine a visual of two people sitting back to back so they can't see each other. 
You need to be the person that turns the chair around and actually tries to see this person for where they're at. And when you turn your, your chair around, you're inviting the person to do the same thing. I once had a, a conflict at a youth basketball game. This is kind of a, a silly situation, but I think it's a good example of me learning from my past experiences of not handling conflict well and getting defensive, but actually practicing what I preach and seeing deeply, understanding where somebody was coming from. But I had a parent that was just really mad at me. They felt like their kid was not getting the ball enough. They felt like it was a personal attack against them and my the kids on the team just weren't listening and I was a bad coach. And this is happening at halftime and so she's yelling at me and people are are starting to look and wonder what's happening over there. It's kind of creating a scene in this this gymnasium. And if you've ever been in an elementary school gymnasium, you understand that things echo really quickly. So when someone's raising their voice, like you can imagine the kind of the stir that it was causing and the uneasiness amongst the crowd. But I took a deep breath instead of getting defensive in this moment. I took a deep breath and I really challenged myself to think about where was this person coming from. And instead of getting defensive and explaining or even explaining myself why I was doing the things that I did, which wasn't really important in that situation, right? I think sometimes in conflict, we try to justify our actions, which is honestly not the best uh, first step. First, we want to try to see this other person and try to see their perspective. And so I made a statement that kind of diffused the situation. And the statement was, I can tell you really care about your, your child a lot. I just said that. And in that moment, things diffused. She was able to take a deep breath. She apologized, actually. She said she was just frustrated that her kid wasn't getting the ball. She knew I was trying to do my best. And that's all I said. I didn't justify my actions. I didn't explain where I was coming from. I just took the time to try and see their perspective and understand why they were doing this thing. And sometimes it is literally this simple to stop a conflict before it gets started in the, in, in the moment. When there's somebody is approaching us and attacking us, instead of getting defensive, have the confidence, have the vulnerability to just take a deep breath, see where they're coming from, try to find some sort of common ground assume the best intentions, like this person probably has good intentions somewhere. Assume the best intentions, try to understand where they're coming from, make that your focus as opposed to getting defensive and getting in attack mode because that's just gonna amplify and escalate the situation. But if you can take that deep breath, try to see their perspective, generally it'll allow a productive conversation where two people can collaborate. As a leader, the extra element you have is sometimes you're trying to diffuse situations between two people or things have already started to bubble up and you're seeing the conflict happen, you're starting to see the tribes form, which does make it a lot more challenging. What you have to do though is not take sides. Take the same perspective. Try to understand where each person is coming from. Challenge each other, the two people in the conflict, try to challenge them to see the other person's perspective and understand why they are doing the things that they're doing because there's probably, when we start taking the layers down, there's more to it than just this person is irritating me. This person is doing this thing that's making my job harder. Let's, let's, let's unravel a few layers and really understand what is, at, what is the motivation behind that? What is the inspiration for these actions? So if we can challenge our team to do that instead of battling each other, instead of bad-mouthing each other, we're gonna be able to put ourselves in a place where we can actually mediate and make some changes. The five layers of why are a great tactic. So let's dive into that. So a lot of conflict happens because something happened that made life harder for somebody. Like simplified terms, that's generally what happened is I was on this path and this thing got in my way and I have somebody that I need to blame for this thing. There's somebody that I am looking at and that had direct relation to this obstacle. I'm saying it's their fault that this happened. And as a leader, we see this happen in our organization all the time where expectations are set. Someone doesn't follow through on it. Something gets missed. Something gets overlooked. And now we have a problem. Now we have a fire drill. We have something that needs to be taken care of. What happens a lot of times on teams is we just put a bandaid on it. Something happens, we're busy, we don't have the mental capacity to try to deal with this because of everything else that is happening 
in that moment. So we go with the fix that is the easiest and the quickest so we can get back to our day. And even when we make these decisions, a lot of times we understand what we're doing. We understand this is not a long-term fix. We tell ourselves like, I'll get to this later, but then we never do because we have more and more fire drills that keep happening because we never get to the root of the issue. We don't fix the systems and the processes that are leading to these fire drills. So they keep happening and it drives people mad. People go absolutely mad. People are already busy. They're already stressed out and they have to keep dealing with these fire drills. It's a terrible experience. So my challenge for you is instead of putting band-aids on these problems, take some time to get to the root of the issue. Your goal as a leader when problems happen is to find the system or process or tool that needs to be fixed or needs to be created to prevent this problem from continuing to happen. Sometimes it's going to be a lack of accountability, right? Expectation was already set. This person is not following through on the expectation. They continue to not follow through on the expectation. And as a leader, if you don't have the right conversation to fix that action that that person is taking or not taking, it's going to damage trust on the team. It's going to create conflict within the team. And people will lose respect. They'll lose trust for you as a leader because they'll wonder if you're actually competent enough to do the job. They'll wonder if you care enough about the impact that this lack of accountability is creating on their team. So as a leader, it's a big deal. And in order to be proactive, we can ask why five times. Five layers of why. So something happens. We need to figure out why it happened. So here is an example that I had ChatGPT, my good friend ChatGPT, help me out with so I could give you a case study of what this could actually look like. So here's the setting. A software development team in a mid-sized tech company was facing reoccurring issues with the development of a new feature leading to delays and increased tension among team members. So we got this, this thing that's happening, right? Tension's increasing, but there's a conflict. The team was unable to meet the deadlines due to a reoccurring technical issue leading to frustration and blame game among the team members. So this thing happens. What do people immediately do? They get into self-preservation mode. They start blaming each other. They want to make sure they're not the ones that are held accountable for this. It wasn't their fault, right? But good news. The project manager decides to implement the five wise technique to identify the root cause of the problem and find a solution. So let's step through the five whys. Let's look at this practical application. Why was the feature not deployed on time? There was a bug in the code. Okay. Why was there bugs in the code? The code was not reviewed properly. Okay. We're starting to understand the problem a little bit deeper, right? Why was the code not reviewed properly? The team was rushed to meet the deadline and skip the review process. Okay. Starting to get some more clarity around this. Why was the team rushed to skipping essential processes? The timeline was set for the project was unrealistic. Hmm, okay. Why was the unrealistic timeline sent? set? There was a lack of clear communication between the management and the development team regarding the project's complexity. So now we can actually get to the root cause of the issue. Again, like almost all conflict is a result of a lack of communication or gaps in communication processes. There was a lack of clear communication between the management and the development team regarding the project's complexity. So in order to fix these bug issues in the future, instead of blaming the coders, the actual fix, if we want to fix the systems that prevent these fire drills from happening in the future, now that we understand the root of the issue, we can create a system and process that will allow us to eliminate more of these fire drills. We have to find a way for the management and the development team to have more clear communication right now we can focus on the problem that's actually going to have a lot of trickle down effect because if we're only focusing up here on the top level and the issues that happen we're going to be constantly it's like whack-a-mole like something comes up we put it out something else comes up we put it out it just is exhausting it's impossible it's stressful it stresses people out that's not a great place to work, but we can prevent a lot of those by taking the time to really understand what's actually happening. 
why are people quitting? Like, let's take some layers down and understand why people on the team are actually quitting. Why are customers constantly emailing on Saturdays, right? Like, why are there always customer issues on Saturdays? Okay, let's take some layers down and understand what's actually causing this. Instead of band-aids, we can fix the processes. We fix the processes and systems. We fix a lot of other symptoms of the actual root problem. So challenging you, this is a challenge for you. When problems come up, do not put a Band-Aid on that problem. Instead, take a step back, find the root cause. The five whys framework is incredible. I challenge you to use it. And if you have questions about conflict resolution, please shoot me an email, jacob at workweek.com. I'm going to be talking about it and writing about it all Q4. And I'm excited for it. I appreciate you joining the Leader's Lens. Enjoy your day.